In 1954, NACA realized the need to continue studying hypersonic and spaceflight. They established required characteristics of what became the X-15 and presented them to the Air Force and Navy in July of that year. Before year's end, NACA, the Air Force, and the Navy entered into a tri-service agreement to develop and fly three X-15 research planes. And the idea was what was the Wright Air Development Center at the time, one of AFRL's predecessors, was going to manage the early part of the program, the procurement, the design phase. Then the NACA was going to manage the flight test program, and the Navy was kind of a junior partner in this. After the WADC, headquartered at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, selected North American Aviation as the contracting partner to build the X-15, Reaction Motors was selected to provide a man-rated, throttleable rocket engine to power the craft. This one project combined disciplines from the majority of the Air Force's research laboratories. Propulsion, human factors, materials, control systems, airframes and airfoils, ejection seats, telemetry, simulation, and instrumentation technology used in the X-15 was extensively researched and tested within the Air Force laboratories. High-speed wind tunnels were developed to test aerodynamic heating at speeds above Mach 5. Large centrifuges were built to test pilot response to prolonged gravity loads. 1958 saw NACA supplanted by the newly formed National Aeronautics and Space Administration. And the following year saw the first X-15 delivered to the NASA High-Speed Flight Station at Edwards Air Force Base in California. Scott Crossfield, North American Aviation Senior Test Pilot, made the first unpowered glide flight of the X-15 on June 8, 1959. Because the rocket engine consumed large amounts of fuel, the X-15 was air-launched from the wing of a B-52 at 45,000 feet. The rocket engine provided thrust for the first 80 to 120 seconds of flight. The remainder of the normal flight was without rocket engine power and ended in a 200 mile per hour glide landing on Rogers Dry Lake adjacent to Edwards Air Force Base. The X-15 used conventional aerodynamic controls for flight in the dense air of the usable atmosphere. For flight outside the Earth's atmosphere, the X-15 used a reaction control system. Pitch and yaw control the attitude of the airplane. Um, and uh, and the, the roll thrusters control the roll as you swept back and forth because, of course, the aerodynamic surfaces had no effect whatsoever at those altitudes. The X-15 was the first X-plane program to use a realistic flight simulator to plan and practice mission profiles. The, the, uh, the simulator let us not only plan flights, uh, plan out flights, but practice flights and to see where deviations were beginning to build up and take those deviations out and nullify them out as much as possible. Twelve pilots flew the X-15 over its career, with eight earning their astronaut wings by flying the aircraft into space. Neil Armstrong, one of the first to fly the X-15, would later become the first man to set foot on the moon. Joe Engel, a later addition to the X-15 pilot fraternity, logged over 225 hours in space on the space shuttles Columbia and Discovery. The X-15 flew 199 times over an eight-year period. Technology and techniques developed for the plane would influence the space shuttle and other spacecraft. By the time you got to Mach 8, you had been to Mach 6 in the X-15, and the profiles were identical. The, uh, the glides were identical. We used the air, same airspeed, same height, to set up the overhead approach. Uh, but the confidence was already there. We'd, we, we had routinely brought back the X-15. That was the most familiar and uh, part of the whole flight when it got time to fly Columbia. Experiments flown on the X-15 included thermal protection and navigation equipment used on the Saturn launch vehicles during the Apollo program. The X-15 flew faster than any fixed-wing manned aircraft at 4,520 miles per hour. Flying higher than any aircraft at 67 miles, it was the first aircraft to use reaction controls in space. 
its pilots used the first practical pressure suit in space. It demonstrated winged spacecraft landing profiles later used by the space shuttle. Although the X-15 now sits in a museum, it gave the knowledge needed for today's designers for future hypersonic aircraft.